Jeepers creepers. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Ugh. Guys, I'm losing my mind. I like the Snyder Cut. And I don't know why. Ugh. Jeepers creepers. Ugh. All right. It's time to do some inventory. We got to go through these. Okay, do it with me. All right. Kino. Kino. That's very good. <laughs> Kino. Kino. Kino, 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 Kino. Super Kino. <laughs> Please excuse the mental breakdown that I may or may not have just had, but it's true. I liked the Snyder Cut. And now I don't know what to do with myself. The Snyder Cut is honestly something I've been clowning for the past four years, and I expected the absolute worst. I had zero hope for this, and somehow I liked it more than WandaVision. I liked it more than like the past few Marvel movies. <laughs> I honestly expected to come into this ready to give a roast. I was gonna do a sick roast. I was basically gonna have Zack Snyder on the fire. He was gonna be feeling the flames, but I can't do that. Now, Zack Snyder is probably the most divisive director in Hollywood right now. You could say Michael Bay is up there too, but Michael Bay is someone that we unanimously hate. <laughs> we love to hate Michael Bay, but Zack Snyder is someone you either love or you hate. For example, 300 is a movie that is basically a cult classic at this point, but it only has 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. So that definitely shows that even with his most popular and successful movie, uh, people still didn't like him. I did actually like Watchmen. I think that's a really solid movie. And it, visually, it's really beautiful. It, is the substance really there? Not really, but uh, in what other superhero movie do you have two superheroes f***ing in a jet while Hallelujah is playing? Uh, the answer is none. <laughs> And people certainly didn't like him when they started toying with Superman and Batman in his DCEU movies, which have been divisive to say the least. Man of Steel is a movie I think is okay. Uh, the third act kind of makes me want to rip my head off and like throw it over the balcony. But other than that, there were some really interesting ideas going on. Batman v Superman, okay. <laughs> I don't love this movie. I think it's kind of bad. But I enjoy it in a guilty pleasure kind of way, and I almost think it's a brave movie. Hold on, let me explain. <laughs> Batman v Superman is a movie where Zack Snyder takes so many risks. He takes so many chances, like having Batman murder people left and right, which goes completely against his character. But then he does other things that make it really interesting to watch despite the really nonsensical plot beats and in some cases performances that are so offbeat that it's just uh, unfathomable as to how it made it onto the screen. So both of those movies are pretty divisive but the Justice League, this is what it's all been leading to. But in 2017, they kicked Zack off his movie because they watched the four hour cut in a very rough form and uh, Warner Brothers thought it was terrible. They thought it was a piece of shit. So they decided to get Joss Whedon to change it to Justice League, which in my opinion was one of the worst superhero movies ever. So because of the failure and just horrid nature of Justice League, we got endless hashtags and movements from this new cult of people saying release the Snyder Cut. Now this has led to a lot of great things. We had uh, a lot of the people um, fighting for this, raising money for suicide awareness. So a lot of great stuff came from this, but you also got this cult of people who decide to <laughs> harass anyone who says anything negative about anything Zack Snyder's done. If you said anything bad, you're gonna get a death threat, Billy. You know I'll punch you in the face with this ba basketball to bash your fucking head, but yes, <laughs> on, I don't care. The haters are gonna hate and they're stupid and retarded. Like literally, I posted a letterbox review of Batman v Superman. I gave it a five out of 10. I said I liked it. 
I said I liked it in my review. And, and five minutes later, some dude is in my comments telling me why I'm wrong. It's like, w w w what are we doing here? Um, do, do you have a day job? It's so odd and all of the really toxic people of this whole release the Snyder Cut movement have really undermined everything and they've turned it into a meme. So it's just something everyone's made fun of for the past four years. And, and it's a shame because somehow this movie is actually really good. <laughs> whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey! Like honestly, M. Night Shyamalan could brainstorm twists for two years straight and he wouldn't come up with anything like this. <laughs> So even though I did really like this movie, to my huge surprise, I have quite a few negatives, so let's get right into those. The first thing I want to mention is this apocalypse scene. Now most of the movie was filmed in 2016 and 2017, but Zack decided to do a few reshoots for this new edit, and one of those reshoots came in the form of an apocalypse scene. And, uh, it's pretty rough. You can tell the entire thing's on a green screen. Everything looks really weird. The editing is so off and you just have awkward moments of silence and especially like Jared Leto's Joker just sitting there and then he'll like do like a ah, ah, ah. And it's so embarrassing. Speaking of which, Jared Leto, uh, why are you back? Why are you here? Did, uh, I told you to not enter the door you left, but you came back anyway. When people saw his new look with the longer hair, they're thinking, oh my God, maybe he learned from Suicide Squad and that terrible performance he gave. You know, he's gonna have this big comeback. This is gonna be great. Um, yeah, it turns out he, he took none of the feedback and he, he's just as terrible as he was in Suicide Squad. Not to mention Batman literally tells the Joker he will f and kill him, which is the most Zack Snyder thing he could have possibly had Batman say. I made the mistake, I will fucking kill you. And my god, there were so many lens flares in this scene. You could barely see the Joker's face with all the stupid lights coming out the corner of his face. I feel like J.J. Abrams probably had the biggest fucking hard on in the world watching this. So yeah, this apocalypse scene did not work for me at all. Something else that didn't really work for me, just like it didn't in the theatrical version, Ben Affleck is Batman. I, I don't know what happened. Because in Batman v Superman, I thought he was really great, really good Bruce Wayne and Batman, even though the, the voice thing is kind of dumb. But in this, he just seems bored, and he almost seems like a Nick Fury and Tony Stark knockoff at this point, instead of actually being Batman. Like, yeah, it's nice that we don't cut between obvious reshoots where Ben Affleck's weight fluctuates <laughs> every two seconds, but it's still a really uninspired performance. And also, there's a lot of stuff in the Justice League version that I really thought was Joss Whedon, and I was like, wow, that's terrible. Um, it turns out some of that was Zack Snyder, and one of those was the whole Superman memorial scene where they fight Superman right in front of the statues. Not only does this scene have the infamous line, Kal-El, no! <laughs> Kal-El, no! But it also has the really stupid plot device of Cyborg's self-defense system automatically queuing on Superman like, oh my gosh, it's gonna shoot him no matter what. So that's what cues the whole fight. It, it's such a stupid plot device that I've never liked. And not to mention the whole Lois Lane part makes even less sense here because they try building up that she comes to this memorial every once in a while to give this guy coffee, but she just happens to show up. She happens to show up the day that Superman comes back to life and crashes into this thing. And right before, right before Batman is obliterated by Superman. It's, it's the stupidest fucking bullshit. <laughs> and also, the fight in the sewer is basically exactly the same as it was in the Whedon version. It's an okay fight, but I think it's a little worse here because one of the best moments of that to me was when Batman told the Flash, just save one person. And that kind of motivated him to save a bunch of people. And that was a really cute moment. That's completely gone here. All we have is, is Batman being like, save those people. And then it's just like, uh, th there is zero emotional weight here. It's just uh, uh, not, not good. And the biggest problem with this movie, by far, you already know, it, it's the runtime, four hours, Four hours? Uh, n n it did not need to be. Four. 
<laughs> this could have been a fantastic movie if it were only three or three and a half hours. But with four hours, you can really feel the runtime, and it's so bloated. There are so many scenes just full of slow motion and characters doing nothing. Like, you have Lois Lane doing her daily routine and pouring a cup of coffee in slow motion. I'm sorry, but in our Justice League movie, I, I don't think you needed to keep this in. It it's basically like if I made this review and in the middle of it, I got a cup out. Yeah, I'm a Marvel shill. Shut up. I got my cup out, and I just go... Like, like, that's it. Like, is that interesting at all? I don't think so. And it is pretty funny that every character has their own slow motion montage. Like, you have the Aquaman one, and then you have the Flash saving someone. And it's like, you have all these slow motion scenes with a song that's clearly from Zack Snyder's Spotify playlist. And it... <laughs> It's very Zack Snyder, but it also gets very tired. Another issue I have is that the Justice League never really feels like a team. They never get the camaraderie together. And that's something I'll actually give the edge to Joss Whedon, which I know, that's a sin. But Joss Whedon actually tried with reshoots to give them a little more personality or a little more integration with each other so they actually have a little bit of banter going on like with Aquaman confessing that he's like, oh yeah, we're all gonna die, but you know, Wonder Woman's really attractive. That was really stupid, but you know what I mean. But in this, it, everything feels so hollow. There really isn't any chemistry. It just feels like five people who aren't really coming together. They're just um, acquainted because they have to be. But honestly, those are like the biggest issues I had with the movie. There's a lot to love here, which I'm uh, shocked by. <laughs> For one, the first thing you notice immediately off the bat, the color grading is far superior because in the Justice League version, they had to lighten everything up. And w what's really important here is that the costumes and all the CGI, this was designed with Zack Snyder's color grading in mind. So when you have Cyborg, you know, it's kind of a rough character to bring in to, to life in CGI. So keeping him in the shadows is really important to kind of hide the, the crappier parts of the CGI. But in the Joss Whedon version, he's just out in the open and it looks absolutely horrendous. So it was nice here to have the big contrast a gloomy style back because it really helped the overall delivery of the film. Speaking of the CGI, Steppenwolf actually looks a lot better, surprisingly, because in the Justice version, his design looked f horrendous. <laughs> I don't know who decided to switch it to that after he was already in Batman v Superman, but yeah, he looks a lot better here. And I was a little scared at first because uh, an image of him came out and it was like Spike CGI Central and I was like, oh no, like does this really look any better? But in the film, the Spike stool kind of cool stuff. It's a cool little setup and the CGI is pretty solid. It is really solid. I was surprised. Another nice thing about Steppenwolf here is that you find out more about his motivation, which is really great because that was completely absent from the Justice version. And him being under dark side is a really interesting approach. And it's a meme at this point, but you can actually see emotions through his eyes. Those damn eyes. Speaking of dark side, um, Darkseid is awesome. <laughs> Darkseid is so cool here. He's not in the movie a lot, don't get me wrong, but him being there brings an overall sense of urgency to the film that was completely missing from the original. There's just this overwhelming threat that this person's gonna come in and completely destroy the world, and especially with the apocalypse scene midway through the film, not the one at the end. That was really creepy and terrifying. It really was. So Darkseid, really interesting character who granted doesn't have a lot to do but still I liked his inclusion and the flashback scene with the Atlanteans and the Amazonians coming in and Darkseid slicing off the Green Lantern's hand dude I fucking fangasmed him so hard <laughs> given the film's four hours of course they were gonna have more character development but I was shocked by how good Cyborg is in this movie. Ray Fisher is actually really good, and it's a shame that he's probably not gonna be in a lot of other DC movies now, 
but yeah, he's great, and he brings this emotional weight to the movie that was completely missing from the theatrical. His relationship with his dad is really cool. I really like the sequence where he's learning how to use his abilities and his like metaphorical mind state. It's a really great element that was completely missing, and I'm shocked that they completely cut him out of the theatrical one. And I brought up Ezra Miller's Flash. I fucking hate that dude in general, he's a scumbag, but his Flash is so much better here. Gone is the Flash who was talking about brunch and uh, motorboating Wonder Woman's boobies, and w w <laughs> now we have this Flash who's still awkward, still a little cringy, but I feel like it fits his overall character more, and we get more dramatic moments too that actually give him emotional weight as well. In particular, the one scene where he saves Iris from the car in slow motion, while granted, a little creepy that you're fondling this girl's face in slow motion <laughs> without her even knowing. I guess conceptually that's a little, uh, but you know what? Visually it looked really dope. I mean, it's Zack Snyder, go figure. And uh, it, maybe it was a little goofy to see CGI hot dogs and buns and a giant sesame seed coming at the screen, but damn, was it a cool scene. I can't even lie. Speaking of which, the visuals here, I, I mean, it's a Zack Snyder movie. The, the visuals are amazing. What, what did you expect? <laughs> Zack Snyder's visuals bring so much dimension to everything, and it's so refreshing after... I hate to compare it to Marvel, but the MCU get kind of gets stuck in this pattern of being really generic looking and having a, especially the Russo movies, having a really gray, bland color scheme. But Zack Snyder, even though a lot of his films are very gloomy, the, the moments that are full of color and that are visually interesting really shine amid all the darkness. Especially in the flashback sequence with all the war going on and the metaphorical sequence inside of Cyborg's mind. There's a lot of great stuff visually here. And then to top it off, the final action scene here is so much better than it was in the theatrical one. Because not only is the sky not a completely fake piece of red sky, <laughs> that they probably did in Microsoft Paint or something. But it looks dark, everything looks like it fits, nothing is sticking out like a sore thumb like Cyborg was in the theatrical. And the action's actually riveting, and my god, Superman in this? Superman was cool in the original one, but in this, he is so badass, oh my god. Granted, one thing I will say, <laughs> I will say this, is that the scene is preceded by Superman going to see Martha and Lois in a cornfield, which is a really sweet scene. He has a butterfly on his finger, so it's kind of showing his innocence and how much he loves the world. But then this is followed by him beating the shit out of a Steppenwolf and literally lasering his ear off in bloody gore. <laughs> Which is such a Zack Snyder thing to do because it's like you think he's understanding this character and it's like oh my gosh He's getting the innocence. This is great. And, and then he's acting sadistic <laughs> It's like my god Zack. I mean, I, I love you Zack, but <sighs> And then I really liked how it all ended up with the flash going back in time and fixing everything It actually gave the flash something to do other than uh, running next to Superman in the worst CGI of all time and saving a Russian family that was just introduced for the sake of having someone to save in the third act. That was awful, but in this, this is really great. Another thing I want to shout out is that the soundtrack is far superior in every way than the Danny Elfman score in the original because in the Danny Elfman one, it was so reliant on other scores of the past, like the, the score from the Christopher Reeve movie, as well as the Tim Burton Batman movies. It never felt like its own distinct vision. But here, it feels a lot better, everything's bigger, the stakes feel higher because of the score, and it's a really wonderful score. The only thing I will note is that the Amazonian score that comes in throughout the movie, uh, <laughs> that singing kind of got my nerves, not a huge fan of that, but other than that, really good score. So those are basically my thoughts on the Snyder Cut. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I was expecting to hate it. I was expecting to come out and be like, yes, this is why that movie sucks. Zack Snyder sucks. He doesn't know how to make film. But damn, this dude proved me wrong. And I'm glad he did. Zack Snyder had to deal with so much fuck shit during this. Like, he had all the Warner Brothers stuff going on, and then his daughter passing, unfortunately. Just really horrible stuff. 
So I'm really glad he finally got to have his vision realized in this form, and especially because the movie's great. Like, that's the best part of all. Granted, I did roll my eyes a little bit when the title card came up saying, presented in 4x3 to preserve Zack Snyder's vision. <laughs> I was like, oh no, we're already starting off this pretentious, but... I didn't mind that at all. I thought it was kind of cool. But yeah, I liked the Snyder Cut. Jeepers Creepers. Oh, Jeepers Creepers.